Now they're lifting their metal hands. People in the streets see it now. They're running toward the East River, thousands of them. Dropping in like rats. This is the end now. If you recall that Orson Welles radio show with War of the Worlds, where they broadcast that and everybody just went crazy. People committed suicide, people volunteered for the military because they actually thought that aliens had landed. So imagine a society where these beings with this bizarre technology suddenly appear in a landscape where people have lived for thousands of years. I can't imagine anything more traumatic. The Indians have never seen ships like ours or men like us. They fled in terror, leaving behind only empty huts and warm fires. My people were the first ones to see the spaceship on the horizon, so to speak. <laughs> the first contact that indigenous peoples in Alta California had with Europeans comes in 1542 with the voyage of Cabrillo. Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo was an adventurer and explorer. He was a soldier. He worked for, for Spain all his life. It was a Spanish expedition that he led, and he had been participating in Spanish conquests and expeditions for some time. Spanish had come into Mexico in the early 1500s, had gone through the process of conquest there, and were finally ready to set their sails and their sights on something farther afield. And so Cabrillo came and stopped on the Channel Islands. This was the furthest projection of Europe into a world that they knew nothing about. What he was trying to do, as what Columbus had been trying to do half a century earlier, was figure out a way to connect Europe to China. Now, Columbus didn't realize the Americas were in the way. The Spanish, by Cabrillo's time, obviously did. Once they found out it was full of silver and gold, though, that inconvenience suddenly lost some of its meaning. We always say it's the three Gs that brought people here, gold, God, and glory. We're here at Spanish Landing on the shore of San Diego Bay, where the Maritime Museum of San Diego is building a reconstruction of the Rio San Salvador. One of the purposes in the construction of this vessel was to help historians on the East Coast recognize that there was, in fact, history west of the Allegheny. Cabrillo landed in San Diego in 1542. That's well before Jamestown, well before Plymouth Rock. It wasn't until 78 years later in the Mayflower Expedition that settlers came into America. So historically, this is actually where America began. So the idea was to reconstruct that thing to house the story, if you will. And people have been imagining what the San Salvador must have looked like for a long time. Mainly, though, she's going to embody the sense of who we are, our origin story, as it began with a confrontation with the unknown. The San Salvador was built in 1539. That was the beginning of what historians call the gunpowder revolution. The ship, armed with even the very primitive weapon she had, represented an enormous concentration of power at the time, as much as an aircraft carrier would in our world today. Cabrillo built the original San Salvador with the aid of indigenous peoples that were conscripted into the project and soldiers, many of who had no experience in building ships. They had a sign-up sheet, anybody interested in building a boat. You don't have to be a carpenter, you have to know anything, just want to volunteer. About 10 years ago, we began to research what the ship actually would have looked like, and it was quite a mystery for a number of reasons. For one, the ship had a short career. After the voyage to California, she went on another voyage to Peru and disappeared with all hands. There are no plans because ships were not built to plans in the middle of the 16th century. So we had to do a lot of forensic research into what this ship would have looked like. I asked how long it was going to take to build it, and he told me a year to year and a half. <laughs> it's hard to keep a straight face. That was three and a half years ago. <laughs> we're not done yet. <laughs> 